Sammy was young man who had his whole future ahead of him. Because of what the police did, we lost him forever. On January 25th, all eyes were on Toronto courts as an 11-member jury delivered its verdict in the case of police officer James Fursillo and the fatal shooting of Sami Yatim. Following Yatim's death, Fursillo was charged initially with second-degree murder, but on Monday the jury acquitted him of that charge as well as of manslaughter, finding him guilty instead of attempted murder. You know, you have an 18-year-old who's, who's in crisis, he's meters away from the police officer holding a knife, and the first, the first efforts that were made essentially were to shoot and kill him. While the president of the Toronto Police Association, Mike McCormack, immediately said this. Clearly this sends a, a chilling message to our members. It has definitely uh, impacted the psyche of frontline officers. Much of the public was confused or angered by the verdict, stating that Fursillo didn't just attempt to kill Sammy, he succeeded. Now that seems very strange for him to be charged with attempted murder when he did kill the person. In this widely seen video from July 2013, Fursillo is caught in plain sight, firing nine shots at Yatim's body. What the verdict signifies in this case is that the jury deemed the first three shots as acceptable for self-defense, while the following six, aimed then at the corpse of Yatim, were not. Toronto lawyer Peter Rosenthal has a history of representing families of those killed by police. We'll never know what the jury actually thought, because in Canada, as opposed to the United States, jurors are not allowed to tell what happened during deliberations. It's almost definite that the jury verdict was a compromise. There must have been some jurors who wanted the officer to be found guilty of murder, and some that wanted him to be acquitted of all charges, and they compromised on the verdict of attempt murder. That's my conjecture. The Real News also spoke with Jay Khan, co-founder of Black Lives Matter Toronto and organizer with the BLM Network. Jay argues that much of the response at large has been focused on technicalities and the misguided actions of a single, quote, rogue cop. I think that we need to look at this as um, at Sammy Yatim and his death, uh, his murder uh, by this police officer as uh, not a singular event, but as something that is systemic. We see Chief Saunders talking about how there's going to be more training. We need to look at um, our training uh, a lot better. We need to look at better solutions. I've looked at uh, introducing other uh, levels of force, uh, the training. We've added another full day dedicated to training on people in crisis. It really isn't going to the root of the issue, which is racism and ableism. I don't think Sammy Yatim was ever given uh, the chance to sort of the opportunity, rather, to sort of come down from a situation from that was a very heightened one. There were many officers there shouting at Mr. Yatim and yelling him to drop the knife, but none of them tried to make any rapport with Mr. Yatim to establish any possibility of verbal de-escalation. Really, the questions that we really need to ask and tease out here are do people deserve to be ex uh, essentially executed for holding a knife? Do people deserve to be executed for being racialized and for having a mental health crisis? And so that's what happens when police officers are armed with tasers and guns. What happens when they're armed with assault rifles? Just a week before the Fursillo verdict came news that Toronto police were soon to be armed with military-grade weapons. By the springtime, 17 divisions will be armed with 51 high-power assault rifles for frontline officers. I'm concerned. I'm deeply, deeply concerned at, at what that means for everyday people. I'm concerned for what that means for movement builders and folks who are lobbying for change and for justice. After a four-month trial, Fursillo is currently suspended with pay and remains free on bail, leaving much anticipation around the sentence he will face when back in court in May. For The Real News Network, Shariel Tejfidi, Toronto.